Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Oliver Westmoreland. I am an ISC registered level three immigration advisor and senior immigration consultant at GSN Immigration. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so you can continue to watch our extremely interesting videos about UK visas and immigration advice. Today's topic is supplementary employment for skilled workers. I'll just quickly run through what is a skilled worker? A skilled worker is someone who holds a visa as a skilled worker, someone who does a job which is at least averagely difficult for a specific employer in the UK. The employer in the UK has sponsored them under the skilled worker sponsorship scheme to work for that firm um, as a skilled worker. And there are all kinds of rules about salary, there are minimum salary requirements, um, English language and all kinds of things. And in case, uh, in case you don't know, in case you want to know, this is a route to settlement. Skilled worker is a, a good, solid route to settlement. It's the main route by which skilled, um, qualified workers um, get visas to work in the UK. Some people are happy doing their job. Do you understand, perhaps not, not everybody knows this or realises it, that a skilled worker can be a full-time employee, typically 37 and a half hours or 40 hours a week, could be a part-time employee. It's very, very possible. Sometimes the question comes up, can the skilled worker do a different uh, supplementary job? Um, the answer is yes, but there are rules about it. Um, if it's within the rules, the skilled worker does not have to get permission from the Home Office. If it's not within the rules, it isn't. But if it is, it, it, no, no permission is necessary. The work must be, very importantly, a skilled occupation i.e. it must appear in one of these skilled occupation lists which is published by the Home Office. Other thing, can't be more than 20 hours per week. Other thing, I suppose it's almost obvious, fairly obvious, the hours that the, the, the supplementary employment would take would not be within the working hours of the job that they're doing. You know, if you're working 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, you can't do a supplementary job in those hours. Pretty obvious, really, because if you have a like Mr. Shaw, let's say you're, you're an employer, you have someone who's I'm working nine to five on Fridays, Monday to Friday for you, and say, Oh, I'm taking Tuesdays off to do another job, you, you wouldn't like it, would you? It's, it's pretty obvious, but that, the rule makes it clear. The extra hours for this um, supplementary employment must be outside the normal hours that you would work for your, um, your skilled worker visa. That's it, pretty much. Um, pretty much. Another rule, um, it's, there seems to be actually no rule, a person can take undertake unpaid voluntary work. There, there don't seem to be any rules about this at all. But if it's going to be paid, um, it must conform to those rules. Quite simple. Mr. Shah, with his convoluted brain, has probably thought of lots of searching questions he's going to ask us. Yes. I would like to start by uh, the last point you just mentioned. So one could do unpaid voluntary mm. work doesn't matter how many hours no, they do apparently not it'll be no, 10 no. hours on saturday and more or less yes. on sunday but or I mean, evenings yeah but i'm um, not infringing the normal working hours i strongly imagine i mean there's going to be big problems with that anyway wouldn't there but yeah no, no rules apparently great okay and um another query i would like to um get some information from you about would be can a person who's on a skilled worker visa be self-employed Self-employed in their supplementary employment. Yes. Because they couldn't be self-employed in their main job because you have to be employed. Yes. You mean on the supplementary employment? Yes. That's a very good question. My overall answer to it is no. Uh, the rules don't actually say about this, but I can see all kinds of problems. Look, you're working as a self-employed person in your supplementary employment. How do you really prove you're only working 20 hours per week? It's impossible. I think the Home Office is going to be very, very suspicious about those applications. My advice to anyone is um, be very, very careful. It's not outside the rules. It's not clearly within the rules. There are all kinds of problems. Don't forget, the supplementary job must be in a skilled occupation. How you? First, I mean, I've been self-employed in my long, illustrious career. How do you really prove what work exactly you're doing as a self-employed person? Because as a self-employed person, you're, you're a sole trader, probably. You're your own little boss. You own your own little company. How do you really, really prove that? 
Um, the rules are not against it. I, I would say my advice is be very, very cautious about it. Home office might have big um, suspicions about it. Would they find out? Well, they might. Um, whichever way you work, you're going to get paid, aren't you? You're going to have tax records. You're going to have records and records and things. I would be very, very cautious about that. Home office might make a problem about self-employed person working in supplementary employment. You might come to a fight if you want to um, renew your, your visa or apply for settlement. If, if you want detailed and specialist advice, you can come to a, a reputable firm like us. Give us your detailed circumstances. But my, my advice is to be cautious about that. Sure. And it's, it's like a lot of things. Sometimes the big grey areas, the rules don't cover all the grey areas. It's one of those cases. Can I be a director of a limited company yes. in my supplementary work? Yes. Okay. But no rules about that. And can I do any job? You can do any job that's a skilled job, as defined by being on the Home Office lists, um, appendix skilled occupations. There are various lists of jobs which are deemed to be skilled as, as long as it's one of those. There are different lists. But as long as it's one of those, it's okay. If it's not one of those jobs, it's not okay. Um, okay. And where can one find this list? Well, the simple answer is, rather than read out the, the, the website link, it's on Home Office website. Just Google it. You'll find it easily. Perfect. And what if somebody wants to do more than 20 hours a week as a supplementary employment? Well, it, it would no longer be supplementary employment. It would be uh, it would become secondary employment. You would need to get a new cost. You would need to amend your visa conditions. As soon as you go over 20 hours, you get into a different set of rules. So one person can be sponsored twice, potentially by two different employers. Wow. Probably most people wouldn't try not to keep it, try to keep it under, but if it happens, then that, that, that will be the requirement. And do, do be aware, like, like I said, there are tax records and things and things and the Home Office knows what's going on or they can find out what's going on. As soon as you go over 20 hours, you're going to get into that other category, secondary employment, and, and the rules are a bit different, a lot uh, a lot stricter, a lot more onerous. Sure. I would like to add a little bit more information to that. If what we've recently seen, um, that the Home Office on the SMS system of the employers are now asking employers to update their employees' national insurance number it seems like they're trying to link it with HMRC, so the Home Office will be updated instantly by the HMRC about someone's income and tax they may be paying um, but to track these. That's an insurance like it doesn't change through your life. And no, what the you number doesn't. Update it, it doesn't change at no, all. But why are the national insurance number, they, they are getting information from the HMRC. Now, Mr. Shaw, can I interrupt you? They have complete powers. They don't need anything special. They can contact HMRC and get all the information about tax records and everything. I don't understand that. I've had this discussion before. Your national insurance will save you for life. Yes. I don't understand what it means by update it. So in, before, um, employers were not required to update employees' national insurance number on the SMS system. That's when you mean update, you mean they weren't required, it wasn't required to, to, to state add. it? Yes, they no, didn't. They okay, weren't. Mr. Shah, I have to teach you some English now. Update means change um, information already given. What you're saying is that they're now required to provide national insurance number. Yes. But do you know this? There's been for many years that there was, there was a legal instrument a few years ago. Home Office now has complete powers. They can go into HMRC records. They have complete powers. There's nothing to stop them. That mm. that was been the case for many, many, many years. Mm. Okay. Perfect. We like a bit of argument. It helps them the vitality <laughs> of, of, our, of our vlogs. Awesome. Thank you so much for today's vlog, and we see you in the next one. See you next time.